But remember, that guy is why you are still in business. So like maybe think about that for a minute. And if what, it was two girls, I'll just say it was two girls. <laughs> Text messages came out that were saved. They ripped through it. She goes, no, look, this is what this is what really happened. Hi right, guys, we're gonna sit down today with Mr. Brian Potter. If you don't know Brian, he is the one, one of the two men that put on the NARBC shows. And we're just gonna hear a bit from him, what his thoughts on the industry, his thoughts on the future shows, and just shows in general. And uh, you know, Brian is a very passionate guy and I just wanted to sit down with him and let you guys see him. We, we did a thing with him a while back when this channel was still Triple B TV and uh, with him and Bob and kind of talked through stuff. But I just wanted to hear a little update from Brian, especially with where the industry and market is today. And we're going to do that right now. You're watching the Redline Report. Long time since we sat down and did one of these. Has been a, been a minute. minute. Yeah, yeah, has been a minute. Last time we did it, uh, you had me in tears with my mom. Hmm. Oh, gotcha. Well, that wasn't with you. That was with your, your mom, right? How did that go? Like, Because I know you had me in tears talking about it. Somehow you and I, it was like me and you did a section yeah. after you did with my mom for a while. You you and you, I mean, I, it might have been the same show when I, I definitely did one with you and Bob. And we, we, sat, we stood in this back room over here yep. for a little bit and did and then, that. And, and then you interviewed my mom. Yes. And then you interviewed me and you told me a little bit about it. And I'm, I'm, I'm walling up right now just, just because. Yeah. Stop. Ah. <laughs> it's ah. awesome. Well, That's the part that just kills me. Yeah, well, it was them being here and just seeing it and, you know, and all that. It's just, it's, yeah, it's cool. Well, it's, it's a big deal for you, right? I mean, it is. It, it really is. You know what I mean? It's like there's reptile shows, and I'm sure the people that do them like them, but I don't know to the level, maybe. I don't know if, like, if I did what I see, other shows wouldn't affect me the same way, I think. This is different, man. Like, it's a different beast here. Yeah. Nothing everybody. There's other, you know, there's other good shows. But, like, this is a beast. There's something just... And it's my hometown. Yeah. And my mom and dad are here. My mom... My sister sells T-shirts. My niece sells T-shirts, you know. That... It just makes it a lot better. And, and Tilly Auction's always special. There's just things about this one that I don't get the vibe. If I'm in Dallas at my own show, I don't have that vibe. Yeah. It, it, not, there's nothing wrong with that show. Nothing at all. I, I love that show. But it's just not this. This is a beast. Well, this is also not just for you. I mean, for you, obviously, there's a lot of ties. I mean, you're, it's, you're putting on the show. This is your hometown. Your folks are here. But this show has that for a lot of people, myself included. And I'm still, I've been racking my brain for years now trying to figure out exactly what it is. If it's the perfect storm of, like, things or what it is. But there is something special about this show, and there are lots and lots of people to recognize that. Yeah, Robin always says, he goes, he'll, he'll go to some other show, and he'll be like, it was good. He goes, but it's not Tinley. I don't know, man. I can't. I know what you're saying because I know when you when you were saying what you were saying, I was reading your mind, knowing you were going like, I can't get what it is that makes it that special feeling, but it's there. Yeah. Um. I, I know. I get it. I think. I think a lot of things. I think the hotel has almost become our partner. There's no like. It's not a pain in the ass to deal with them. If you're a vendor and you're like, hey, I, you know, most of the guys know Danny who runs the whole facility, right? So like, we all feel like we. I think everybody feels connected to here and comfortable and like they're at home in a sense where you know how everything works. You know where the bars are, the restaurants are, outside of the hotel. You know the people that work here because the same guy, Tony, the security guy, has been the same guy the whole time. Danny, you know, and it's just I, I think everybody's connected somewhat to the building. And, I, 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 you know, best I can describe that. Yeah. I think there is that. I'd love to see that filter out into the entire... And there's, there's a lot of... It is a big family, and there's a lot of community there that exists outside of here, but I'd love for the feelings that I get and the, the, the connections and, like, the forgivenesses that I see, of, you know, in relationships between people that happen at shows, this one in particular, I'd love to see that, like, blossom outside of the show and, like, when we get back to our computers and our phones and our communication there, that that would stay. Yeah, that, the... Um inner business love you mean like kind of yeah is that what you mean like in like per, it seems like a lot of people squash things here is that what you mean that's what i mean like they squash like beefs that were like online or happened whatever and then they get here and it's like dude this is awesome let's just love you know let's hug it out and move on from it yeah yeah i saw one of those yesterday yeah that's awesome i saw one yesterday literally i, I kind of instituted grabbed two people and i was like hey both of you need to talk because what, it was two girls i'll just say it was two girls I don't want to say who they were because it's nobody's business, sure. but they had some beef. But there was no beef. It was a misunderstanding thing, and it kind of blew up, and it spun out, and somebody else was putting a little interjection into it. And then the text messages came out that were saved. 
they rip through it. She goes, no, look, this is what this is what really happened. Here's her, here's me. And she's like, wow, that's just, there's a whole bunch of people that were like kind of salty on you. And really, it was all proven in the text that that never happened. And so they hugged it out, and now I see him running around, you know, and it's cool. It's just like, you know. Yeah. It's I, good. I love to see more of that. It's my favorite thing in life is to see those those relationships mended. And, and The old Brian Barczyk, just be kind to people, right? Yeah. Yeah. That too. Great to see Lori here. Oh, man, is that cool? Yeah. She came in, you know. Lori's, I always say Lori's like, that's a hard bitch. Yeah, she's like from day one. And that's going back now for me 32 years of knowing them. And Brian was the the flighty little dreamer. And Lori was the like, we got to pay the fucking rent. This is what we're going to do. You know what I'm saying? She would make it happen. Like, like, and it's, it's, it's very Mark Bell and Kim Bell-esque, right? Mark's a dreamer, and Kim institutes the plan and makes that plan happen and makes sure there's money in the bank. You know, Lori's that same, has always been that same way to me. She's always been the one that, end of the day, she's like, it's going to happen and it's going to, uh, they're going to succeed. And it wasn't that Brian wasn't that guy, but Brian was like throwing, you know, shit on the wall every day. And Lori was like making sure some of it stuck, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Makes perfect sense. But she definitely is that. Kim Bell's that same way. And it's, I think it's uh, Robbie Hamper, you know, right? Same sort of. Just the women in the industry, like, uh, there's been some really strong ones and, and did more behind the scenes than I think people think. And a lot of, they're always here. Most of those people are all here. And uh, that's a cool part of it, you know, seeing that. It's like a different vibe from what I think most people think, that the women in, that were behind these companies were powerful and made things happen. Well, do you do you see um, any young folks that will be? Because obviously, we're. I mean, you're. I'm a little younger than you, not by much as sure. much of my look. But do you see any folks that are? That's obvious. Like things are going to keep going. That there's going to be like this new generation that's going to take what's happening here and make sure it continues. You know, it's weird. I remember when we were the generation that was like taking this thing off, right? Like, so I came in in ninety. Three got out of the Marine Corps, came, opened up my shop, and made my way to Daytona. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, Orlando. 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 And uh, you could see there was like a new, like there was clearly the geezers and this younger generation, which was, I would say, led by Pete Call, maybe. You know, I'm not saying the leader, but you got to remember, Pete steps in, some nobody kid from the East Coast flies out to California to get the albino boa. From boy, I'm on the spot. Shit, I shouldn't. I know these names, and I'm just trying to. But anyway, if you look up the story, you'll see who it is. It's three major, major, major guys. Like, like Pete had no business when they couldn't breed that albino boa. It was completely idiotic to go buy that boa because there's no chance in hell he was gonna ever breed that, and he did. And then all of a sudden he had albino boas, you know, and it was like he just blew up. I mean, my partner and I flew out there with 50 grand for seven snakes. And uh, that's sort of where my introduction to everyone came. Pete was like, this is my guy, Brian Potter, man. This fucking dude flew out 50 grand cash and him and his partner and bought all these snakes for me. And he's fucking great. I just want you to meet him. And so that's how I started meeting people, you know. And it was, it was, it was a, just a crazy Orlando trip. And Dick Gergen wouldn't leave me alone because he thought I had more money. I was like, bro, that's all. That was all of it. There's no more. And he just wouldn't stop. Funny. I don't see that now. So there was the Pete Calls, Brian Barczyk, Kevin McCurley. Um, they were like these young, it was like almost when like grunge came in. That's how I felt. Like it was like these younger, crazy dudes. I mean, cause they were all wild. Right. And they all came in and started like breeding shit. Like, like just, they turned it from like a bunch of knowledgeable older guys who could breed stuff and were like good at it to like, these dudes came in and were like, we're going to blow this fucking thing w- wide open and we're going to make tons of cash. And they did. You know what I mean? I mean, you look at, God, who else? Uh, it would be Barcheck, it would be Kevin McCurley, it would be Pete Call. Um, well, Lindy was bringing in a good amount of stuff, huh? Lindy kind of came out of, for me, because I didn't know him, left field for me, but it was, it was like he was attached to Kevin, right? They were always doing, like, stuff together. Right. And, I'm not, and I'm missing some of the California guys, too, you know? There's, there's a bunch of guys there, too. But that group came in, and it... It, it, it just it just became different, right? It was just different. I don't see that now. 
I don't see. I'm looking around in there, and it's like maybe a Bob Vu, right? Maybe a Bob Vu would be that, right? And, and Kobilka, I guess, yeah. So there you go. There's a couple guys um, that really came in with, a, I think, an upgraded business plan over the other guys that I just mentioned. Those guys did not have, like, a great business plan other than they knew they wanted to, like, buy a lot of cages, buy a lot of racks, fill them, produce a bunch of animals. But the business mind, Kabilka, number one, Ozzy, right there, too, um, as far as, like, the business side of it and, and, and changing it from just, like, a, maybe a basement breeder thing to a legit powerhouse business. Yeah, but there's not many more, right? I mean, do you see who, who's, who's Babu, who's Kabilka, who's... I mean, in the biz- business set, I mean, snake-wise, I mean, I was just talking to a guy, uh, Tyler Tyler Kirk, who's been, I guess he's number one um, shipper with, in inverts and, in, like, tarantulas and, and stuff. Yeah, and then there's those guys that I don't even know who they are because I don't, I don't actively go and buy bugs. I, you know, I get some, but I have my guys, so I just get them. You know, I don't, but, yeah, I heard there's some, there's some bug guys out there that are absolutely killing it, killing it. Yeah. And people don't even, you know, if you're outside the bug thing, you don't even know who they are, right? But they're killing it. They have amazing businesses, doing very well. I don't even think they know how good they're doing. Yeah, that, that's Sh- something I was bringing up to, or I brought up when I was introducing him when he wasn't listening, is that he doesn't even know how good he's doing. Some of these guys don't know, like, how good they have it. And, and they, they earn it. They deserve it. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I just don't think they, like, look around the room and go, dude, I'm fucking killing it you yeah, know no. they're just busy grinding and doing it which is awesome there's nothing wrong with that it's, it's awesome there's a few young ones coming up right there's, a, there's some kids in here if you go to some of the tables there's a few you know yeah it's cool to see um we've obviously taken a bit of a downturn not just in this particular industry and hobby but like just overall there's an economic kind of shit storm happening right now how do you see that playing? You've been you've been in it long enough to see like like the 08 thing and like yeah. there's you've seen dips and you've seen sure. rises. What what do you think this one falls into that? I, I don't think we're out of it yet. It just seems like World War III's coming, right? Yeah. I mean, like legit, like World War Three. How does that? You know, I don't know. I think if we go down, the whole thing goes down. Like everything's down. I don't think. I think we're a strong enough industry now that we can take ups and downs and roll with it. Um, that they don't hit us. They don't wipe us out ever, right? I think it would take World War III to wipe the whole industry out. I don't think that, like, uh, you know, you get, of course, you get the ball guys, you know, or the people that don't, the people that don't have ball pythons pointing at the ball python guys. Oh, look, it's done. It's over. You're done. There's still ball python guys making more money than those guys will ever make in this downturn. And, yeah, it's rough for a lot of people. I think the ball python game, the guys that are really hurting are the guys that never kept up with their collection, never put out – a sensible plan, like Kabilka, right? He's always got this, like... Next thing coming. Next, you know, people are like, oh, it's over, it's over. And then he pops out, like, a Netflix episode, and you're like, holy shit, I want to buy that. <laughs> yeah, It's like, where did that come from? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think anything will ever take us out, though. I, I really don't. I think we're as resilient as any other business, if not more, maybe, because, I mean, look around, right? We're like a, diver- we're like a, a diverse crowd, but... Also, like, these people aren't giving up their shit. It's like it's like going to a gun show. There's no the guns are never going away, either of the reptiles, right? As I mean, much as there's legislation constantly being brought against it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think most of these people are not giving up. They're like, whatever they'll have to do, they're gonna have the reptiles. They love them, and you know, it's great. You know, like we're our industry's strong. Our industry's very strong, I believe. Um, the problem is we're getting attacked nonstop. It just never ends. And what the, it's like the the old saying is like they only have to win once. We have to win every fight, mm. right? Because yeah. anytime they beat us on something, there's a bunch of more issues to deal with. Now, Phil, obviously, freaking amazing, just best guy ever for the job and doing an amazing job. And the money has been behind them thanks to number one, Zoomed, number two, Timberline. Um, it's a, been an open checkbook on, from both of those. And then, obviously, whatever we do at all the auctions and everybody else doing it at auctions and everything else that goes on. Um, but any shortfalls, uh, Todd. Goodman, owner of Timberline, and Gary Bagnell, owner of Zoomed, get out the check and write the check. Yeah. So we've been lucky. Yeah. Without those guys, we're done, we were done long ago. Totally. Yeah. We'd have been done. Huge blessing to have those guys. Oh, it's unreal. Yeah, no doubt. I Wait. see guys online bagging on Zoomed products occasionally. Just pisses me off. It's like, don't use the product, right? But remember, that guy is why you are still in business. 
So like maybe think about that for a minute. And if and if it doesn't fit you or whatever it is, don't bag on the guy. Don't bag on the company. Just don't buy it. But that dude is keeping you alive. Yeah, that's huge. I need to go out and check out his place. I'm like down the street from Holy him. shit. I, I hear about it. I've seen pictures of it. Unbelievable. I finally got the, like the, the soft invite to go because I was part of a turtle club down there for a while that like they, they got invited one time, but it had been a while. They wanted to update everything. And the last time I saw him, he was like, yeah, you can come out and film. I was like, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's a mind-blowing place. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Anything you want to leave people with before you wrap it up? No. Th- thank you to everybody that's ever supported us. Um, we've always had amazing support. I can't tell how many people come up to the counter day to pay, and they're like, man, thanks for what you guys do. You guys do so great. You know, it's like, I mean, we put it on. It's the vendors. Like, it's, you know, we organize it, right? That's about all we do. We organize it. But if these vendors weren't all coming here, the variety of vendors from all over trusting us, driving across the country, you know, and all that, we'd be nothing. You know, it's all the vendors that make the show. It's not us. It's vendors. You know, as I tell them all the time, I go, when you guys complain about other shows that you don't like, and then I watch who goes to them, if you don't go to those crappy shows, those shows are dead. You can knock them out as fast as you want. Just be smart about the shows you do. Support the ones that you think support you, and the ones that don't are are running things the wrong way. Stop going. They can't have a show if you don't go. Yeah, true. It's the simplest thing that... It's like voting. It just never happens. Fair enough, man. Might be. But, uh, thank you. I, thanks for having me on. Yeah. I appreciate you, bro. And uh, just thanks to everybody, man. Yeah, no, thank you for even like having the space. And like, this is this is great. I, I, I love being right here, man. This is so fantastic. Permanent spot. I love it. <laughs> nice, dude. Thanks, me. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Yep. Thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. I um, appreciate you watching. And you can just be assured that next week we'll have another awesome guest for another awesome interview. And we'll see you there next Tuesday. Y'all take care. Yeah, make sure you get make sure you get right into that microphone. Okay. <laughs> I know. I saw you trying to distract me. I'm a professional. <laughs>